Welcome to Elect Online. In this problem, we're trying to determine what percentage or what fraction of the original energy we have in the system is lost because of friction, the dissipation of the energy due to friction. So we have an object here starting at the top of the semicircular path, uh, or it's actually a quarter circle if you want to be technically correct. We have no friction along the surface until we reach the flat portion where the the path goes uphill at an angle of 37 degrees. There is kinetic friction here. We have the coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.3. Here's the final height that the object will reach when it comes to a stop. And of course, the original height, h initial, is going to be equal to the radius of that circular path. And so we can say that this is equal to the radius. And of course, the only place where energy is lost is on the ramp going up where there is a coefficient of friction. No energy is lost as it slides down. So we're going to use the energy conservation equation where we can say that the work put into the system plus the original potential energy plus the original kinetic energy must equal the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy plus any energy loss due to friction. All right, and essentially, that's what we're looking for, and then we need to find out what the fractional loss is relative to the original, oh, not the original energy that we have, which is going to be in terms of potential energy. So putting in what we have, we have zero work put into the system. The original potential energy is going to be mgh initial. There's no motion initially. The initial velocity is zero. The final potential energy is going to be mg times the height gain, so it would be mg times the final height. The kinetic energy final is going to be zero, and the energy lost is going to be the friction force times the distance. Now notice the first thing we probably want to do is convert this and write this in terms of the distance. Notice that's the opposite side to the angle, so we can say that h final is equal to the hypotenuse, which is d, times the sine of the angle theta. So we can go ahead and make that substitution in here. So we have uh, mgh initial is equal to mg times d sine theta plus the friction force. Now what would the friction force be? Well, when we have an object on here, notice we're going to have the, um, the weight, the mg. We're going to have the mg cos theta, mg cosine theta. And we're going to have the mg sine theta. And then of course, we have the normal force pushing back. And then we're going to have the friction force. Let's find a different color for that. Whoop. There we go. So we have the friction force, which is going to be also in this direction. So we know that the friction force is going to be equal to the normal force times mu. And the normal force, of course, is going to be mg cosine theta. mg cosine theta is going to be the normal force on the incline. So let's go ahead and plug all that in. So the friction force is going to be the normal force, which is mg cosine theta. We multiply times mu, the coefficient of friction, times d. Now right away we can see that we can get rid of g, and we can get rid of m. Divide both sides by m and g. And what we want to find first is d. Once we find d, we can find h final. Once we find h final, we can find energy lost. And once we find energy lost, we can find the fractional energy lost. So let's first factor out a d. That gives us h, h initial is equal to d times the sine of theta plus the cosine theta times mu. And so finally, we can say that d is equal to h initial divided by the sine of theta plus the cosine of theta times mu, like that. So now we'll go ahead and plug in the numbers to find d. So d is equal to the initial height, which is r, divided by the sine of theta, would be the sine of 37 degrees, plus the cosine of 37 degrees, times mu, and mu was equal to 0 0.3. All 
All right, the sine of 37 is approximately 0.6, the cosine of 37 is approximately 0.8, so we say that d is equal to r divided by 0 0.6 plus 0 0.8 times 0 0.3, which gives us 0 0.24 added to that, that gives us d is equal to r divided by 0 0.84. So that's the distance of the incline. Now from that, we should be able to figure out the final height. So h final is equal to, based upon this, d times the sine of theta, d times the sine of 37 degrees. So this is equal to r divided by 0 0.84 multiplied times the sine of 36, which is 0 0.6. Okay, now let's calculate that. So we have a 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.84. So we have the final height is equal to 0 0.714 times the radius, which means that this is equal to 0 0.714 times the initial height. All right, now let's think about this. So the final height is 71.4%, the original height, and of course that would then be also relative to the final energy, since the final energy, E final, is going to be equal to the same ratio since, and let me explain what I'm thinking here. Notice that the energy is in terms of the potential energy. The potential energy is mgh. The final energy is going to be mgh final. So notice that we have some lost energy, and that the remaining energy is going to be a fraction of the original energy, and it's going to be relative to the relative height. It'll be the height final versus the height initial. So maybe a better way to write it is this, the ratio of h final divided by h initial is equal to 0 0.714, which is equal to 71.4%, which means that we have 71.4% of, oh, let me write that again here, it's not very clean. All right, so what that means is that we have 71.4% of the energy original, the original energy remaining. So we have 71.4% of the original energy remaining, which means the remainder of that is lost. So 100% minus that, which is 28.6% is lost. So therefore, we could say that energy initial minus energy remaining and I forgot the E there, remaining divided by energy initial that is going to be equal to the fraction of energy lost, fractional energy lost. Alright, so that's how we find the fractional energy lost. We take the original energy we subtract from that remaining energy, so that gives us the energy lost. Divided by the original energy gives us the fractional energy loss. In this case, this is equal to, uh, let's see here, that would be energy initial minus the remaining of the energy, which would be 0 0.714 of the energy initial. That's the remaining energy divided by the original energy. Notice that all the E sub naughts cancel out. And we're left with 1 minus 0 0.714, which means that it's 0 0.286, or 28.6% of the original energy remaining. So the fractional energy loss would be 0.286, or 28.6% of the original energy was lost due to friction going up the ramp. And that is how it's done.